Hello, I'm Douglas Allen, Burnaby Mountain Professor of Economics at Simon Fraser University. Welcome to my third and final lecture. In the second lecture, I made the case that COS provided a logic for understanding how we organize exchange and production. That logic ended with the claim that all forms of organizations maximize wealth net of transactions costs. It's a very powerful hypothesis, but one that critically relies on the concept of transactions costs. I've written extensively on this subject, and here I want to outline the nature of these costs and how they relate to property rights and to Ronald Coase. John Hicks, in 1935, was the first economist to use the term transactions costs. But he only meant it as a friction, a wearing out of the shoes as one goes from store to store. That use of the term is still very common, and transactions costs are often modeled like a tax, a transport charge, a shrinkage, or some other very neoclassical cost. Such a cost by itself has nothing to do with economic organization. They only act as a sand in the wheels of trade. Ronald Coase did not explicitly define transactions costs, but for his logic to make sense, we need to start with another great economist, Armin Elchian, and his ideas on property rights. For Armin Elchian, property rights are the rights of individuals to the use of resources. He understood that these rights are not solely dependent on the state, but they depend also on customs, on social norms, on reciprocity, and voluntary restraints. Here, let's define economic property rights as follows. Economic property rights are the ability to freely exercise or to freely make a choice over a good or a service. Such an ability to make a choice can be thought of as an expectation. And the size of this expectation is often called the degree of perfection. Hence, a perfect property right is where the probability of a choice being carried out is one. An absence of property right is where the probability is zero. For almost everything, our expectation is never perfect. And so most things are owned with imperfect property rights. Hence, there is a spectrum of property rights that ranges from zero to one. Now, as individuals, we always prefer to have stronger property rights to weaker ones, because we prefer more wealth to less. We enhance those property rights in many ways, including the following. We could steal from others. We can protect ourselves from others stealing from us. We can capture goods that are in the public domain, that is, goods that are owned by no one. And of course, we can cooperate with others and create new wealth and divide it in some fashion. Any effort we make to enhance our property rights is costly. These costly actions might be dissipating, as in the case of theft. Or they may be wealth generating, as in the case of cooperation. We are always, therefore, in the process of establishing and maintaining property rights. And this leads to the proper definition of transactions costs for an institutional analysis. Transactions costs are the cost of maintaining and establishing property rights. These are the types of costs that violate the Coase theorem. And therefore, these are the types of costs relevant for an understanding of all forms of organizations. Any definition of transactions costs that excludes efforts to create and maintain property rights or only includes costs that arise out of scarcity alone cannot be consistent with the Coase theorem. Now, consider the following figure. On the horizontal axis is the degree of perfection for the property right. The solid downward sloping line is a marginal benefit of property rights 
and the upward sloping line is a marginal cost curve for property rights. In this particular hypothetical case, the costs of enhancing property rights, the transactions costs, are positive, and the optimal level of property rights is PR star, which is clearly not perfect. This is the world we mostly live in. When property rights are imperfect, then their allocation matters, and we should choose those rights that generate the highest wealth net of transactions costs. It is quite obvious to see that if transactions costs were zero, then the optimal degree of property rights would be perfect property rights. As Ronald Coe showed, when rights are perfect, then the allocation of those rights do not matter. Hence the Coase theorem. When transactions costs are zero, resource allocation does not depend on the distribution of rights. It is also obvious from this graph that the reverse is not true. Just because we might have a case where property rights are perfect, this does not mean that transactions costs are zero. As shown in the graph, it might be the case that the benefits of ownership are enormous, and so great resources might be expended to create full ownership. It might also be the case that the transactions costs involve only some lump sum amount, and that at the margin, the cost might be zero. Again, ownership will be perfect, but transactions costs are positive. Thus, it has been common in our profession to occasionally find real-world cases where the Coase theorem seems to hold. However, one should not conclude from some cases that transactions costs are zero. There's not the time to discuss the conditions necessary for transactions costs, nor the critiques of the Coase theorem, which all fail due to an inadequate definition of transactions costs nor to explore the model and how to test this idea. However, if you are interested in matters of organization, governance, institutions, or other matters related to the distribution of property rights, you must start with a proper understanding of transactions costs and how they relate to property rights and to the Coase theorem.